Most machine learning models are created to realize that you want to see 50% data with Sandra and 50% QCAT. To do just that, they use huge clusters of computers using CPUs and GPUs and even TPUs to deliver these outstanding state-of-the-art artificial intelligence recommendation technologies to your phone. As we all know, this and much more computational hardware is used when training, for example, GPT-3, which costs alone in electricity, 100 thousands of dollars to train. But most of the time running interference that means predicting on these models is computationally expensive too. Making these types of energy costly operations happen mostly in data centers far away from your phone. This means additionally to costing a lot of energy it also takes a lot of time for your request to the machine learning model to be returned to you also called latency. Now resolving exactly this issue is what TinyML went out to solve. The general idea is that instead of getting your YouTube recommendations by sending a request around half the world until it finally reaches the model, you do the computations on your own device. Let's say your phone. And in the extreme, on a Raspberry Pi or small microcontroller. What is TinyML? TinyML is a domain in machine learning that explores the types of models you can run on tiny low-powered devices like microcontrollers. It is all about low latency, low power and low bandwidth, model interference on teeny tiny devices. I feel all of you have trained and predicted with some models by now and know how long that can sometimes take. Now imagine doing it with less. To illustrate why this is difficult, let's compare the power consumption of some devices. Standard CPUs consume anywhere from 60 to 120 watts. Of course, this depends a bit on what machine type we are speaking of. And if you have ever done machine learning predictions with a single CPU, you know this ain't exactly a lot. I personally often use 50 or so. GPUs, just for a rough comparison, roughly twice as costly, but of course you can compute most matrix operations faster. However, still a lot of energy. And again, when I train bigger models I need four of them for 24 hours or so. Now typically microcontrollers and mobile phones are the center of TinyML. Microcontrollers consume power in the order of milliwatts or microwatts. This is more than 1000 times less which enables them to run on batteries. Think environmental sensors, internet 4.0 and all these use cases that just can't send their data to the cloud all the time to do the machine learning for them. Maybe because there is no reliable internet connection, electricity or if you think about your smartphone it's annoying if machine learning drains all your energy or you have to send each request to the cloud which would make you wait every time you use it and user experience becomes a nightmare. Example of TinyML have been around for years and it's not just your average strange dude living on a mountain off the grid with a fetish for machine learning. Catchy phrases such as OK Google, Hey Siri and Alexa all summon the powerful TinyML. The point here is that you want your device to respond immediately and not wait for it to send responses to the cloud. Advantages of TinyML To summarize what we have learned so far, TinyML shines when you are working in an environment where low power consumption is key, low latency, basically you don't want to wait for the servers and you don't have to because it runs locally and will be much faster. Low bandwidth. Sending gigabytes of video data to the server is bad if you are in a tunnel or even in space. This costs a lot of time for predictions to be returned. Privacy. Since the model is running locally, your data is neither sent nor stored on servers, which especially for sensitive data is extremely useful. Think medical data. Cheaper. It's just often cheaper to compute locally than sending the problem to your hardware in the cloud. Additionally, microcontrollers are a lot cheaper than GPUs. Now I hope you understand when the term TinyML is used and in which environment these solutions thrive. I will not go into specific examples of models that perform well in this setting, but what I will say is that very generally you can think of far fewer parameters, simplifications of models and pretty much the opposite of GPT-3. However, if you are interested in how to learn more about this exciting domain, the best starting point is TensorFlow Lite, which has been created with everything we discussed so far in mind. Their documentation is excellent and I would argue it is the most state-of-the-art framework to get started with. As for hardware, there are many devices that could potentially benefit from TinyML. However, if you are looking for a machine learning project, I would recommend anything from the Arduino family or Raspberry Pis, you can buy them for as little as $20. For literature, there is this book from Pete Warden who is technical lead for mobile and embedded TensorFlow, and Zitunyake Daniel, which leads developer advocacy for TensorFlow Lite at Google. So basically, if they don't know it, it's probably an open research 
question. Pete Warden also has an interesting blog at petewarden.com about everything related to deep learning, so check it out. I am sure you have now the right tools to dig into this field or at least know when googling it may be advantageous. This was with me for the week and remember to hit that like button such that this video is promoted to a brand new audience. Cheers!